Welcome to Guided Spirit Conversations. I'm your host, Marla Goldberg. This podcast has been created with you in mind to acquaint you with some of the most incredible metaphysicians and spiritual leaders from around the globe who have helped others change their lives. In this interactive hour, you will be offered insights and techniques to help you make a difference in your life. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and your favorite listening platform. And here we go, on to the show. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? It's Thursday, and Thursday is Guided Spirit Conversations Day, and I'm your host, Marla Goldberg. So today we have a special show. Uh, I am going to be my own guest, and I really, there's a few things that, that are on my mind that I'd like to share and talk about. First of all, sending prayers to those the families in Texas, those affected, and not only are the people in Texas affected from the town of Ovida, but I know other individuals are also affected from watching this. I know I was, and what you may not know about me is it takes a lot to get me to cry. And I was watching the news and tears are just streaming down my face. When you're looking at the pictures of the, the lost children, you know, who lost their lives, the teachers who gave so much of themselves, who tried to protect these children. So sending love and light and a healing prayer to all affected, the families, the friends, the relatives, um, and even those who are just feeling the pain through through their empathic abilities. And so as we move on to the show, empathic abilities, well, that goes along with what we're talking about, right? So today's topic is what is energy healing and how does it work? And the reason I wanted to talk about this today is because There are a lot of misnomers out there. There's a lot of understanding about energy healing and even more so energy healers and the work they do and what, how it affects their clients. So let's start at the beginning. What is energy healing? Well, what is energy? Well, energy are small molecular, um, I'm not a scientist, so please bear with me, but it's a subtle flow of, of molecular movement, I guess would be the best way of saying it. And energy is in everything. The difference is, is how the energy moves. So when you have a very high frequency, you have a lighter feel. So that's why you could feel the energy in the air. You can feel, um, you can see energy coming off of people, off of trees. And there's a flow to it. Now, when it gets denser, when the energy um, frequency slows down and moves slower, that's when you get matter. So you're, you know, in this case, the desk sofa behind me, the table, all energy, but it's condensed into very slow moving pieces. So, and also something else to know is everything has consciousness. Cement has consciousness, dirt has consciousness, trees, plants, um, which we'll get to a little bit later. But I did want to bring that in because it's part of the energy um, that us as energy healers try to work with. So why do people do energy healing? Where did it start? Well, let's start where where did it start or how did it start? And that started over 2,000 years ago. Uh, it's a part of Chinese, med- med- Chinese medicine, and my brain is just working a little bit faster than my mouth, so I apologize. But part of Chinese medicine, when they were working on the chakras, they learned about the chakras. As a matter of fact, people know that I have done Chinese face reading. Uh, I have studied Chinese face reading, and that was also conceived in Chinese medicine as the practitioners, the doctors, were not allowed to touch women. And so they figured out by looking at the color of their skin, their, the whites of their eyes, the tongue, um, and other ways that they're able to figure out what is going on with an individual. Also, Chinese face reading came out of this, uh, out of Chinese medicine as well. 
And what was determined through years and years of observation and working is that your facial features, how big, how small, where they're placed, markings on your face, they all tell a story. Um, and I, it goes back for a long period of time. And what energy healing does, no matter what the modality is, and there are now, I think beyond hundreds, I think we're probably in thousands of modalities because I know through my interviews that many practitioners take a number of classes and then through the classes they take, they are able to create a modality with their thumbprint on it that they have created based on their education and what they've learned and what they've taken in. So it's more than just Reiki. Reiki just seemed to be the modality that seems most recognized. And Reiki can be a hands-on modality or a, you can do it distance, which is another topic we're going to talk about. Um, and Reiki is a way of moving energy. And so how, do, how does a practitioner work with a client? Well, I know for me, I'll talk about how I do it. My high self connects with the high self of my client. And that high self actually runs the show. I am guided through what I receive from my client's high self into what modality I'm using. So let's talk about spiritual response therapy, which is one of my modalities. What spiritual response therapy does, it's a modality that clears blocks, programs, interferences, imprints, implants off of your Akashic records. What are the Akashic records? Well, you can look at it as your hard drive, your soul's hard drive. So everything is saved and put into the Akashic records. So whatever you think, you do, you say, um, all of that, even intent, that's all put into the Akashic records. All that has been done to you, said about you, um, is also put into the Akashic records with your reactions. Because the big thing to know is that how do we get our blocks? How do we get our imprints and our wounds? Well, it's our reaction to what is done, said, or projected upon us. And so let's say you're shopping, you're a child, and you're shopping with your parent. And you decide to do what I used to do, and that was play hide and go hide and seek in the clothes, right? So you have all these clothes on the racks, and I would go into the clothing rack and I would hide, waiting to be found. Well, when I wasn't found, I started to get scared, but I also triggered a program of abandonment. And I say I triggered it because I'm the one who hid. And my mother unknowingly, you know, thought I was next to her when I wasn't. And it took a while for her to realize I wasn't there because we all get a little proactive and we get a little, you know, involved in what we're doing and we're not necessarily aware of what's going on. Today, I believe people are a little bit more aware because of the things that go on, but that's a different conversation. Anyway, so you create an abandonment program or I created an abandonment program. And so I, it's not what I did or the lack of being found, but it was my reaction to the lack of being found. So it's the reaction of what happens to you that really brings some of these imprints and wounds into your Akashic records. And going back to spiritual response therapy. So I take my book of charts and I'm going to see if I have my book nearby. I may not. Um, there are 32 charts and I'm guided to where to go in the chart. But here's the thing, when I work with a client, their high self guides me through my pendulum as to where the programs are that need to be researched and then released, cleared and released. And so that's just one technique. And I, it's a, to me, it's a really powerful technique, but I don't want to I'm not here to promote one technique over another. I'm just trying to share how energy energy healing works and the benefits of it. And 
what your responsibility as a client is. Because a lot of people seem to feel that if I go to an energy healer, they're going to do all the work and like magic, I'm going to be healed and all my problems will go away. And well, that's not the case. So we're going to talk about that a little bit further into this conversation. So what does energy work do for someone? Well, it, the, the energy healer who's educated in what they're doing, become very proficient, they are challenge, channeling, balancing, and manipulating the natural body's energy centers. And since everything is made of energy, energy shifts and changes. So for example, when you have thought, that's, that's one kind of energy. It's the thought energy. When you take that thought and make it into an action, you have now changed the energy from more of a passive energy to an active energy. And does that make sense? I hope it does. And so that's what we as energy healers are trying to do. We're trying to change the energy, and so it can get blocked up like a dam getting clogged or a pipe getting clogged. Uh, and we try to just, you know, act like a roto rooter and clear the, that clog, clear that block so there's flowing in the client's life, in your life. And the benefits, some of the benefits to energy work are it's non-invasive. Energy work can be done in person or remotely. Um, it, there's no space or time in spirit. There's no space or time with energy. So I can work on someone from anywhere in the world and have it be effective for them. And that's me. Every energy healer has that ability. So, so I know there are many people that are like, well, I want to do this in person. Well, it's fine. It's not always conducive. And you can do it in person. But know that sometimes doing it remotely can be even more powerful because you don't have the distractions of wondering what's going on, what the you know, the energy healer is doing, how they're working with you, and is it working? So that's another benefit. Um, for the most part, it's gentle or pain-free. And when I say for the most part, because sometimes when you're clearing your wounds, when you're healing, when you're doing this work, you will be triggered. You will cry. And crying is great because it's a release. But here's the, the, the golden ticket is you're not going to feel the same energy twice. You're not going to feel the pain. So if someone hit you and it hurt, when you see them hitting you or you go through that incident, you don't necessarily have to feel that same pain that is done in energy work. So let's see, Francine says, hello, I was abandoned too. Big trauma here. Thank you. Can a healer hurt us if they try? I have trust issues and how do I know if I can trust the healer? Those are great questions, Francine. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to deviate to Francine's question. Uh, can a healer hurt us if they try? I would say yes. So what I'm hearing is yes. Um, if a healer is really not proficient in what they do or they're doing a modality that they're really not trained well on, I feel that they can, they can hurt you, but not hurt you in the way you think that they can. I just feel that they might not, by not presenting themselves with integrity, that it can hurt because, again, it will bring trust issues up. So if they don't tell you the truth, that can hurt you. If they, you know, are not very forthcoming in how they present things, it can hurt you. If they're not clear on how they explain things, it can hurt you. But not hurt you in the same manner. Does that make sense, Francine? And how do you trust people if you have if you have if you have trust issues? Well, you can work to one of two ways. So I had huge trust issues, huge. Um, and what I've learned to do is trust my gut. 
watch for the red flag. So if somebody doesn't, you know, if somebody's really charming and they're great, but yet you're not feeling it, but yet you're saying, but they seem so or organic, they seem so, so genuine, but your guts, your stomach is doing flip-flops, so you get these really weird feelings, that's when you trust those feelings. That's where you learn how to develop trust because you learn how to trust yourself and what you're getting first. And then you'll know how you can trust them. Um, before you go into any energy healing session, you can always put a protection on you knowing that you can't, that nothing that doesn't belong to you or isn't going to be healed in the highest and best way, you know, for your highest and best good, you can do that. And that will also help protect you. So Francie was saying she was very hurt and she wants to use better discernment. Okay. Thank you. She's saying that it made sense. Um, so here's the thing. You need to trust who you're working with, Francine. And yes, discernment is big, but discernment comes with trusting your gut. So when people say, my gut feels, because that really is one of the big feeling centers. You might hear in your ear something that says, nope, this isn't good. Listen to it. You may feel in your heart that something's off. Trust it. Your gut may feel like it's crunching together, you know, like being wrung out. Trust it. You are your best center for trusting, to, to develop trust. And here's the thing. If you go into somebody and you find that your, your trust radar was off, have no fear. You'll lose some time. You might lose some dollars. But... You don't have to really worry about them damaging you more than, than what you're coming in with. Um, if anybody ever tells you when you're going to die, when a relative is going to die, run to the near, you know, run out the nearest door because that person, thank you so much, Francine, that person, any healer, is trained to know it is not their right nor their business to tell somebody when they're going to die or if they're going to be in a horrific accident or if a family member or loved one is going to die. Now, how they may present it is you want you might want to be careful when driving your car. Um, don't go into autopilot, which many of us do. I'm guilty of it as well. But you want to be able to hear what they're saying. Or you might want to go to the doctor and get a checkup. I'm feeling that you might have something going on here or there or wherever it might be. Or I feel you may want to talk to somebody to help you with maybe it's a psychological issue that the healer is not um, prepared to work with. Because not every healer works in every capacity. There's so many different ways. There are so many different modalities. I mean, you all know, I talk about, I'm trained in probably 35 plus modalities to date. And I've got three more to go before I get my doctorate in October. Um, so there's many ways to, to hit what I call the sweet spot for the client. So my analogy is I look at it like a dartboard, right? And around the edge of the dartboard are all the healing modalities that are out there and even are the healers. And we're all trying to get our client to the bullseye, which is the sweet spot of life. And how we do it is different, but we're all trying to do the highest and best good for our client. Um, maybe I shouldn't use the word all, but most of us are. The other thing I want to mention is if you feel that somebody is addressing you from their ego and not from a pure place, then that's another sign that this healer is not for you. This is not for your highest and best good. See, you've got all the control in the, in the tools. You just have to learn to tune into them again. And energy healing um, can change things physically, emotionally, mentally. But here's the ticket, and this is what I was talking about earlier. 
And the golden ticket is, is that you as the client have a responsibility to work with the healer. So recently somebody asked me if I could heal them from something they've been dealing with. And I said, I can do the energy healing. I can, I can work with you on helping you to heal the wounds that cause the situation. But the situation this person was talking about, she had to take responsibility. Thank you, Alexandra. She had to take responsibility for her choices. So you know I talk about the power of choice a lot. And as adults, we make over 33,000 choices, consciously and unconsciously, in the course of a day. Well, if you want to get in better physical health, but the choice is to sit on the couch, well, how are you going to get in better physical health if you're not going to take the action and get proactive about what you might need to do? It could be as simple as walking around the block. So the choice needs to be made for you to really work on your health. If you want to lose weight, you have choices. Cream puff vegetables. It's a choice. Or and with moderation is a choice. You have a choice where you can have one cocktail at dinner to get that nice little feel, that warmth, or you can drink 17 drinks. It's a choice. You don't have to drink 17 drinks, but you chose to do that, which will then bring you into the hangover stage the next day and you'll feel terrible. But that's a different conversation. But it's about the choices. And so as clients for an energy healer, you have your work to do as well. And it's not laborious. It might just be as simple as staying open or allowing things to integrate or possibly don't focus on what was cleared. Focus on what's in your present moment. And I'm going to give you another example. Uh, many, many, many years ago, I had a client who had MS. And this client was highly depressed because it's one of, sorry to say, one of the maladies that come with MS. And I did something that I don't really do. And that is I spoke to her the day before. I spent over an hour on the phone with her talking to her about what I'm going to do, what I need her to do. So I told her what my job was going to be. I told her what her job was going to be. And I really was very specific at during this session and when I'm done, do not focus on this depression. You need to just allow things to integrate, drink a lot of rest, take walks, be in nature, find things that please you, you know, visually, uh, smell wise, whatever it might be. And then the next day we had our session. And again, I was with her for a very long period of time, longer than the one hour. And at the end of the session, I said, so how are you feeling right now? Her first words to me were, so did you clear the depression? Boom, just like that, I felt everything go back into place. So everything that I pushed out was like heading outward into the universe where it originated from was immediately pulled back because it was corded to her. And it didn't work um, for her because she brought it right back to her. And I'm sure that if unless she got help and she actually listened to what the healer was saying, she's probably listening, you know, having the same symptoms today. And you don't have to. That's the whole thing. You don't have to walk around feeling anxious, depressed, sad, um, angry. There are things that, that we collaboratively can do to work on all of these issues. Um, you know, if you're feeling stuck in your romantic life, there are things we can do collaboratively, collaboratively together to work through these situations. So I guess what I'm trying to tell you in a very long-winded kind of way is that as a client, when you go in to see a healer, you need to be open to the respond, you know, to what's going on. You need to follow the guidance of the healer. So if the healer says, rest, drink water, 
don't think about what we just did and go into the your world and go shopping do something you enjoy walk, whatever it is follow that advice it's not going to be difficult it's not going to be arduous but it's going to be for your highest and best good so bridget's asking can an energy healer heal large groups of people yes and that's when we get into the conscious collective um so meditation is a form of healing it's a way of getting information it's a way where you can release pain release depression release anxiety um and so for example when one person meditates it raises the collective like 72 people are meditating together i mean i have 72 people so when you get more and more people think about the multiplication of it so if two people it's 144 it's like healing 100 raising the consciousness of 144 people etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. now i'm not a human calculator so i'm not going to do what my husband can do but that's why meditation the conscious collective is so good when people have group meditations because it helps the world meditation together with intention because that's the golden ticket of a meditation is the intention that you set going into the meditation so i want to help heal the people of texas i want to help raise the consciousness i want to send healing energy to ukraine and the countries you can intend where your energy is going to go and then it can help a collective of people that's why so many people meditate together with purpose and that is how large groups of people can become affected by the energy shift uh, right now there's a natural shift going on and many of you may have heard of the fifth dimension you know we as humans are moving from the third dimension into the fourth we're getting more sensitive we're becoming more open that's why you have so many more younger people uh, who are raising their children to stay open they're open they're um, to what they're receiving their intuition their guidance they're open to following what they're feeling and they're starting to walk down their path sooner and earlier and that's because the veils are becoming thinner and thinner and we are becoming more attuned those who are open to it now those who don't believe those who aren't open to it well we're also finding a lot of people leaving the planet and that's because they can't deal with the vibration or they don't want to feel deal with the vibration they want to stay where they are and it's important to understand that um it could be in the ways of war which is what's going on in ukraine right now um and people are leaving because they've been shot or blown up but there there's pre-birth planning also in this so i know that this may sound controversial but in reality when our soul is about to incarnate and i do believe in reincarnation and it is a fact that we do reincarnate uh we this is not our first go around people who are sensitive to energy sensitive to metaphysics and open to metaphysics well a lot of them are very old souls they've been around for thousands of years. I know for me particularly, I have had reincarnation through 5,000 years plus. Um, and I've learned that through what my past lives have been, where I have been a pharaoh in Egypt. I've been a chief, an Indian chief. I've been a, a medicine woman or a wise woman in, in the Indian culture um i've been greek i've you know i've had so many different lifetimes um and i haven't even been uh, been introduced to them all but knowing that we are reincarnated but before i digressing so going back to it so prior to the reincarnation we meet with our council and we have a council that guides us they meet us um when we're entering the white light and they're there right before we're reincarnated, going into birth again. And through that, there's a planning process. And there are souls in our soul group who are part of this planning process. 
And you as a soul are shown a number of different lifetimes based on what you need to learn, what you need to work through that you haven't worked through or some of these situations and incidences that are coming to you that you haven't, that you need to learn. And there are souls in our lifetime. So the souls who seem to hurt us the most are the actual ones who love us the most that we really have to plead in and, and ask to do this deed for us. So for example, many people have had abusive parents. Well, you chose the parents based on what you're supposed to learn from them through all the hardships, through all the pain, through all the dysfunction, through all the abuses. Um, and why? Well, you asked for this so that you could choose, and this goes back to the power of choice, in your life, how you want to move forward. You can stay angry, you can stay resentful, and you can keep your life small and not live to the potential that if you made another choice of saying, okay, that happened to me, but that's not going to control me. That's not going to guide my life. I'm going to make another choice where I'm going to learn how to heal myself. I'm going to stay, take steps to put what happened to me into a box and I'm going to move forward free of what had happened to me in the past. And then you're born and you have these incidences where these souls act out these roles that you've asked them to be a part of. I know it sounds very um, challenging to sort of wrap your mind around, but this is the way it works. And if you want to know more, Robert Schwartz has three books, um, Your Soul's Gift, Your Soul's Love, and your soul's purpose. I believe those are the three names, but look up reports and you can learn a lot about pre-birth planning or lives between lives. That's another terminology for your pre-birth planning. But know that all this that we have brought into our lives, we've planned to bring into our life. How you not bring into your life again and again and again is by facing it head on and healing from it. Another example. Uh, addicts, whether it's sex, shopping, drugs, alcohol. If you don't get control of your addiction, if you don't heal from your addiction and live a life without that addiction, you will reincarnate with that addiction again and again and again until you are able to get control of that addiction. Same thing happens with suicide. People who make a permanent choice for a temporary situation, will come back again and have more, more of these situations presented to them in another life. And when they take control and say, no, I'm not going to take my life, I'm going to work through this, that's when they win. That's when they conquer. And that's when they don't have to deal with another lifetime with whatever the situation is that got them the first time or the second, or the third. Now, I know my first husband, I know he and I had had at least eight lifetimes together. And in the majority of them, he was an alcoholic. He was an alcoholic in this lifetime. And he did not conquer his ability to be sober. So he will come back again with the same situation. It doesn't make a difference if he's a male or female, what role he chooses to be in. He'll have to conquer being an alcoholic because I'll have that presented to him once and again. I know I'm going in a number of directions, but I find that this flow is helpful to have you understand your role in your own life and when working with energy healers and how to maximize your experience with your energy healer. That's the real purpose of me talking about this because my goal and objective is wanting you to go into a practitioner's appointment and come out and start feeling the shift and the way to do that as i've said is being open allowing 
whatever that happened to, to integrate into your system. So I told you about the woman who was depressed. I'm going to tell you a story about myself when I was going through my divorce with my first husband. And for over two years, I was um, shot down by the judge. And the judge happened to be friendly with the named lawyer from my ex-husband's law firm. And so for over two years, everything was, was went in his favor. And I was finally given a practitioner's number for spiritual response therapy. When I started working with this practitioner, it was approximately six months prior, and not knowing it was six months, but it ended up being six months prior to the end of my divorce. She and I worked twice a week from the time we met to the time leading up to the divorce. And what happened is because I was open and I allowed what was going on to happen without doubting her or questioning her or what she's doing, but just allowing, all of a sudden, the judge started ruling in my favor. Not only did he rule in my favor, but when it was time for me to get temporary maintenance because he cut me off financially, the judge allowed me a number that my, my lawyer never saw him give anybody before. It was that much. He was not known for being generous, especially to the wives that were divorcing their husbands. And he said to me, he goes, Marla, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing that. I've never seen him give anybody that much money before. I continued working with my practitioner and we had our first trial. Well, in the middle of the trial, my ex decided he was going to check himself into detox, but his lawyer said that he was in rehab. 72 hours as opposed to 28 days, there's a bit of a difference there, right? My The judge saw what was going on and mistrialed, which meant we had to start all over again. Now, would that have happened if I didn't work on, with my practitioner? I don't know, but I would venture to guess it wouldn't. And moving forward, we finally were coming up to the next trial. I'm still working with my practitioner, working with my practitioner. It's uh, the Friday before we're supposed to start our trial. And my attorney said, let's do a Hail Mary. Let's try to settle. And the other side said, yes. At the end of the day, I got 95% of what the bench judge said that I should receive. I left that out of the story. I apologize. But, and I got my divorce. I went home, called her and said, when is your basic? I needed to learn this because it was so powerful how it transitioned and changed my, um, my outcome. And continued working with her for years and years and years. I think she and I ended up working together for like 10 years. Um, long, long time. And I also worked on myself and had other classmates to do exchanges with. So the, there's a question. How, how, should, how often should someone go to see an energy healer? Well, I think it should be somewhat regular. And here's the thing. And it doesn't have to be the same energy healer. But when you're, when you're shifting energy, it's like my, <laughs> my way of looking at it is it's like brushing your teeth or taking a shower, right? You just don't brush your teeth once and never brush your teeth again. Or you don't take one shower and stay clean forever or wash your hair once and never wash your hair again. I mean, this can go on and on, cleaning your house, washing your clothes, etc. So everything is in layers, right? It's like you could say peeling an onion, or I like the artichoke analogy because as you're pulling off the leaves, which to me is like removing the wounds and the blocks, you get to the heart of the matter. And so that's my analogy. But the bottom line is, is I, I personally feel that doing energy work once or twice and once, twice, three or four times a month is important as long as it's regular. And it's based on your financial ability as well. Um, there are healers that are, you know, not inexpensive, but it's an investment in yourself. It's like therapy. When you go to therapy, when you go to a social worker or a 
therapist, a psychologist. You're investing in yourself for your best good. You're trying to heal things. You're trying to understand and get to the bottom of it. Well, it's the same thing with energy healing. You're trying to get to the bottom of what's going on so your life can flow and your life could be so different than what it is today. And so you have to evaluate how many times, here's the thing, if you don't invest in yourself, nobody else is going to invest in you. You need to hear that. If you don't invest in yourself, nobody else is going to invest in you. So, you know, for you to say, well, a pair of shoes is more important than my highest and best good, living a good life, where you can end up buying more than one pair of shoes if you allow the flow to happen, if you allow the healing to happen. So it's really taking, you know, choosing, back to that topic of the power of choice, choosing to invest in yourself will give you a happier outcome than if you only do it sporadically. So I hope that answered that question. Um, I'm going to take a, a brief aside because it's charity shout out time. And as you know, I like to highlight the charities, charity or charities of my guests. And I've got so many. So I'm going to start naming them. If they resonate with you, please donate or find out how you can help. One of my charities is Pause Chicago. Uh, it's a no-kill shelter in Chicago. When I lived in Chicago, I was a huge contributor. I still am. Um, but it's a, it's, I, I believe in no-kill shelter. So if it's not Pause Chicago, find a no-kill shelter. They need towels. They need newspaper. They need food. They need toys. They need pillows. They need money to help pay for the medication that the dogs might need or medical care that the dogs might need. So please invest in your no-kill shelter. St. Jude, help the children. Um, you may find another hospital like St. Jude. Donate, contribute to the best of your ability, whether it's $1, $10, $100, or $1,000. Whatever it is you can do, give. give. Um, to the people of Ukraine. And now I'm sure there are going to be a lot of people out there asking for donations to help with the general costs of those who have just been gunned down in Texas. Wherever you can help, wherever your heart leads, help. Whatever is the charity of your choice or what um, makes your heart feel good, help out in the best way you can. And even if a charity, charity, uh, children's hospital, donate your time. Go visit the children. You know, dress up, make them laugh. You, know, you have to get permission first, but, you know, when you're in the hospital going through painful uh, treatments, laughter is the best medicine. So help a child laugh. Help an animal save a life. Find a home for an animal or help those who are struggling because of war or something horrific like this, this shooting in Texas. Okay, so do you have any more questions that I can answer for you regarding energy healer and what you as the client, you know, should expect? And I look at it this way, don't expect anything and your expectations will be met. I know that might sound a little funny, but really, if you go in without any expectations, just allowing what you want to happen, happen, do it. And here's the thing. You might be in a place where you need a number of sessions before you start feeling anything. Don't discredit it because you may not feel that things happen the way you expect them to. So you hear me, if you, if you follow me, you hear me talk quite a bit about asking for help and asking out loud for your angels, for your beings on the other side to hear you and then to conspire to help you. Well, it's the same thing. It's being open to, the, to what's happening, 
but knowing that it's happening. Be confident that when you go to a healer, things are working on your behalf. You may not know them in a linear way. It may come at you abstractly, but it'll help. So I've got another question. It's how you maintain the clearing from the energy healer when you're living your everyday life. That's a great question. Well, what I, I'm going to repeat myself by saying, you maintain your healing when you don't think about it. When you don't think about, did, did they do me right? Did, did it work? You know, is it changing? Is it shifting? That's when you bring those blocks back. The best thing you can do when working with the healing is to allow and follow the guidance of your healer, which is traditionally drink a lot of water. Follow what your body says. If you're hungry, eat. If you're tired, rest. If your body feels like moving, move. That is the way to maintain a healing session. And when you do healing sessions on a regular basis, here's the thing. You're moving things faster away from your um, away from your blocks, right? So you're cracking those blocks up and you're removing them. You're moving um, imprints or programs that are that are in your Akashic records. And no matter what energy healer is modality they're working on, they're still working on what's going on in your Akashic records. And so don't focus on it. That's the big trick ticket. Okay. Don't think about it. Don't focus on it and move. And what you'll find is it'll be a subtle shift in change. I talk about gratitude programs, you know, doing your own gratitude programs for yourself. I do mine through journaling. I do mine through prayer. I say them out loud in the morning. I say them to myself at night, what I'm grateful for. And here's what was happening. So I didn't realize this, but I would do my prayers and I'd start with the gratitude piece. And all of a sudden, I started feeling myself being more joyful, being happier, feeling lighter. And I contributed to that process that I do every morning that starts with, that's in my prayer program that I do, that starts always with gratitude. I'm always grateful. And I'm always grateful for absolutely everything in my life. And as you hear me, when I sign off, I say I'm grateful for everything that's happened in my life, positive and perceived negative. And the reason is because even the things we perceive as negative offer us growth. They're lessons, they're opportunities, and they're gifts. You just have to find out what it is in each particular incident for your highest and best good. Because it could be a combination of all three. It could be a, could be a lesson. But no matter what it is, it's always an opportunity for growth. And if you look at it as an opportunity for growth, rather than looking at it as something, oh, my God, poor me, and why does this keep happening to me? Well, when you put that energy out, guess what happens? It boomerangs back to you. That's why the four agreements are so powerful. If you haven't read Don Miguel Ruiz's senior's book, The Four Agreements, please do. It talks about living your life by these four agreements. One of them is to not take things personally because most of the stuff are projections from other people. And it's more about them than it is about you. So don't take things personally. Be impeccable in your words, thoughts, and deeds. Well, you need to be impeccable because there's energy in words, there's energy in thoughts, and there's energies in actions. And whatever you put out there, you're going to get back. Mm -hmm. So have you ever noticed anybody who keeps saying, I'm broke, I'm broke, I have no money, I have no money, and they never, ever get out of their financial rut? Why is that? It's because they keep saying, I don't have well, it's saying to spirit, I'm going to keep saying this, so I'm going to not have money. Um, or I'm broke. When you use I am, pay attention to what you put after that. That's why affirmations that start with I am are so powerful. I am successful. I am smart. I am healthy. I am a being who lives in flow and joy and gratitude. 
that will increase your vibration and raise you up. But when you say, oh, I don't feel well, I'm depressed, I'm sad, I'm anxious, well, you're going to have more of what you say. That's where being impeccable with your words are so powerful. Um, and let me see, I'm trying to remember the two other um, of the four agreements, because right now I'm blanking because of, I'm talking about it. If I wasn't talking about it, I'd be able to put it off like this. But check out Don Miguel Ruiz's book, The Four Agreements, and it will help you. If you live by those four agreements, and he has the fifth agreement over as well, when you live by these agreements, you will start feeling a shift in your life. When you do these things on a regular basis, you will find a shift in your life. Meditation will do that also for you. Going in and saying, I need guidance on whatever you need guidance on. And get quiet and see what comes to you. And know that, yes, thoughts are going to run through your brain. You have to decipher. Are they my ego thoughts or are they spirit thoughts? You know, are they spirit's words? Are they spirit messages? And you need to discern for yourself what's what. But no, if you hear anything negative, anything judgy, anything criticizing, that is not spirit. Spirit never, ever messages you in a way that is mean, cruel, judging, or criticizing. That's your ego having negative talk to yourself. And it's really important to know this because so many people, so many of us, and I used to be one of them, my self-talk was horrific. The way I talked to myself, I never talked to anybody the way I talked to myself, but why would we do that? Why do we talk to ourselves in a way that is meaner and nastier and more ruthless than we would talk to anybody else? Let's turn that around. So when you start having a negative thought, when you realize you're having a negative thought, say clear to leap three times, because what it does is it stops it from going into the ethers. It stops it from coming back to you. And it also stops other people from treating you badly, because that's the other part of what you put out there, is that energetically people can unknowingly read your energy and they'll treat you the way you feel you need to be treated. So if you feel you deserve to be treated horribly, people will come around and treat you horribly. If you feel like, no, I do not deserve to be treated horribly. I am enough. I deserve to be treated well. I be deserve to be treated with respect. Then more and more people will start treating you the way you decide you want to be treated. This is all energy. And this is what we as energy practitioners try to help our clients with and try to help people with to have the highest and best good for their life, for, for the practitioner's lives. And you'll find that if you talk to a lot of practitioners, they have seen, they have experienced the dark night of the soul, which basically means that they've gone through hardships and have come out of it the other way, more joyful and happy with flow in their life, living a life that they never thought they'd live. Now, I've been walking on my path 19 years. Next April will be my 20th year. And I used to be, I used to have the same situations happen to me over and over and over again. And it was because of my self-talk. It was because the way I carried myself. It was the energy I was putting out saying, abuse me. Why? Because I abused me. I, ab I, had, I, I made bad choices for myself. I made many choices that didn't serve me. And when I started walking down my path, thanks to my first teachers, which is Alexandra Parnas and Laurel Nemet, I started shifting and changing. And I will tell you that I have changed my life by all the work that I've done and all the people that have helped me with the work that I've done. I have made a 180 from the person who I was to the person who I am today. And now my main desire is not just about me. My desire is about 
you so that you are able to have the kind of life I'm having where I have manifested joy and happiness on the most incredible partner, friends that are phenomenal, the most incredible teachers I have brought to me to help me support my life. And here's the thing, it does take a village. If you're alone or if you're an introvert, take that leap of faith, reach out, allow someone to help you, be open to somebody helping you. And fancy, and like you mentioned, being trusting, follow your gut. You, we don't resonate with 100% of the people we come in contact with, and that's okay. The most important thing is that you follow your gut and know that who you're working with is for your highest and best good. And if the experience isn't the best, what's the lesson, opportunity, or gift in that whole experience? Well, I want to thank you for tuning in today. Um, it has been my absolute pleasure to talk about this. I hope it has helped you. If you have any questions regarding what I've talked about or anything I've talked about in any lives I've done, any live announcements, any other podcasts, or anything you've seen me in, email me at marla at mghealer.com, and I would be most happy to answer your question, clarify things for you, and help you for my, for, in the highest and best way that I can. Uh, know that I'm a straight shooter, and I will always do my best for your highest and best good. Check out my website at Marla Goldberg, and Goldberg has two hours.com. See how I can work with you. Um, I am I bring in more than what I advertise in my energy healing sessions, but I am proficient in past life regressions, in spiritual response therapy or SRT, intuitive life coaching, and space clearing. And I'd be more than happy to work with you and help you to live the life that you are divinely meant to live. You're not meant to live my life or any other healer's lives. You're meant to live your life and you're meant to live it in your highest and best good. So please check me out. If you like my podcast, not just this podcast, but all the podcasts I do, like and subscribe to the podcast um, and to my mailing list which you can find on my website, so that you don't miss one exciting episode. I've got some amazing people coming on as my guests this year, and I don't want you to miss one single episode. I want to thank my assistant, Bridget, for all you do for me. My right arm, my, my left arm, my techie, my tech star, um, she helps me in so many ways, and this is not even enough accolades for what she does for me, but thank you. I want to thank you again, my listening audience, for taking the time out of your day, out of your life to participate, to those who have, who have uh, participated in this podcast. Thank you, because I do this for you. I do this from my heart to yours to bring you information, guys, people who can bring you other information and guidance so that you, once again, can live the life you're divinely meant to live. Um, I will be back at the Bag Lady in Charlotte next Friday on June 3rd. So I hope you'll come and visit me. It's at 1516 East 4th Street. And um, if you want a session, sign up through my website or through the Bag Lady website. It's Memorial Day weekend coming up. So I want to wish each and every one of you a very safe but joyful holiday. Enjoy your time with your friends, your family. Do some self-care, a great time to do things that you might not have time to do otherwise. So enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. And to those who served our country, thank you. I salute you for all you have done to help our country stay strong and stay free okay well until next week as always I send you love I send you blessings and I send you gratitude know that I am grateful that you're in my life in whatever capacity you're in it because not only are you my student you are my teacher and not only am I a teacher for you I'm your student so thank you and if you haven't heard these words today well I'm going to say them to you. And if you have heard them, know that you can't hear it enough.
And those words are, I love you. You are loved. You are never alone. And remember what I had said earlier in the show. If you need something, if you need help, if you need support, pray. Pray out loud. Ask. And if you don't know who to ask for, just ask. The right being will come and conspire on your behalf to bring to you what it is you need for your life, for your highest and best good. And remember, be open to the way it's going to come because it may come in a very abstract way. So pay attention because it might be a song on the radio, an advertisement on the TV, a feather, a bird, something. Okay. Well, I'll see you next week. Take care, stay safe, and again, happy holiday. Bye for now.